യേശുക്രിസ്തുവിന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ സ്നേഹവും വന്നനും ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടെ പറയുന്നു
But in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, we read the feeding of the 5,000 and the long discourse on the topic, the bread of life. Where Jesus said, one of the I am saying, I am the bread of life. Now when Jesus began to explain that, to some of the disciples, they said, it is very hard for us to follow and accept. So what happened was, some of them left Jesus and went on their own way. So all these have taken place during those days. Then again coming to the Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, one more verse I read and then we come to the back to the history. In chapter 15 as we know that is the uh, narration of the Jerusalem Council. Now many from Jewish background and from pagan background began to come to the church. There are some of the Jew people who came from Jewish background. They wanted to bring all Jewish customs and practices into the church and bring both or mixing up of Jewish Judaistic or legalistic views and with Christianity. Now the question was about the circumcision. Now there in the chapter 15 verse 6, the people who came, they say, uh, Verse 5, then some of the believers who belong to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. See, these are some of the attempts done, made by the people during those days. From the side of the Pharisees, then the Sadducees, then people who were converted from Judaism to Christianity, some wanted to give importance to the tradition. Some wanted to give importance to the Mosaic law. The Jewish Christians wanted, wanted the Gentile Christians to undergo circumcisions. And many disciples left Jesus Christ in saying that this is very hard for us to understand and follow. So, several attempts, several efforts, one after the other. Now, there were three groups of Jewish Christians in the 4th century who wanted to bring Jewish legalism, Mosaic law, into the Christian faith. They were known by the name the Abionites, Yekisites, and the Nazarites. So, different groups of Jewish Christians who wanted to bring Jewish practices and tradition into the Christian faith. On the other side, from the political side, they were undergoing severe persecution. From the intellectual side, many accusations were leveled against them. From the spiritual side, during the first century, everything went well and good because all the apostles were alive. People had some personal encounter with Jesus Christ, even before his resurrection and after the resurrection, they were alive. There were a large number of people who attended the day of Pentecost. So, there were people who had some direct experience either with Christ or with the experience on the day of Pentecost. Therefore, they maintained their integrity and credibility all through the first century of the Christian history. But there were some leakages also. We read from the book of Ephesus uh, to the Hebrews, some of their faith began to go down. So some of the evils there, but majority of the people uh, remained faithful to Christianity and they were always ready to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. But when we come to the beginning of the second century, the situation slowly began to change. Last week I said, as we read in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians of the Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, God appointed apostles, prophets, teachers or pastors and evangelists to equip the saints in the church. Apart from them, there were elders in the church, there were deacons in the church and there were also women who were involved in the different ministry of the church who were known by the name deaconesses. In Romans chapter 16, we read about Phoebe and several other people. 
So all of them were involved in the ministry in not their own capacities and the church was highly equipped spiritually under the leadership of these offices appointed by Jesus Christ. Now the church is compared to a flock which is totally dependent on a shepherd to lead them, to protect them, to provide all their needs. That is the same experience as far as the church also is concerned. Quality people, the leaders with quality is required for the church to continue in every generation. But when we come to the beginning of the second century, due to several reasons, the first century offices that we find, the apostles, prophets, pastors and evangelists, that offices slowly came to an end or disappeared, I would say. Several reasons were right there. People began to make uh, this advantage of these offices. Some began to misappropriate these offices. Then some heresies came from uh, different corners. So because of several reasons, this offices appointed by Christ in the first century to the equipment of the church, that almost came to an end. Then the church began to grow and develop, spread to different parts. Many pagans also converted and they began to come to the church. So there became necessary for a systematic administrative structure in the church for it going ahead. Therefore, from the beginning of the second century, we find a transition in the offices or in the administration of the early church. The first century church was completely led by apostles, prophets, pastors and evangelists. Of course, elders, deacons and deaconesses. But when we come to the beginning of the second century, a three-tier system slowly came into existence. Bishop, then presbyter and the deacons. Almost all the churches in the first century were established by the apostles in the main strategic centers of Asia, Africa and Europe. Then from that church, the believers began to travel around and they began to establish other churches. And all these churches, they began to look towards that main church. The pastor in that main church eventually came to be known as the bishop and the pastors of the local congregations, they came to be known as the presbyters and the people who helped them physically, they came to be known as the deacons. So this became a major shift, a change from the beginning of the second century in the ministry of the church. Ministry became more strict and it came under the control of these three offices, bishop, presbyter and deacons. At the same time, in the early church, there were five major centers. Of course, Jerusalem, the cradle of Christianity. Then the second place was Antioch. Because that was the place where the followers of Christ were called as Christians for the first time. Then the third place was Alexandria. And the fourth place was Rome. And the fifth place was Constantinople, a city built by Constantine in the beginning of the 4th century. And that city was previously known by the name Byzantium, B-Y-Z-I-N-T-I-U-M, Byzantium. So these were the five major centers of Christianity in the first few centuries. Apart from the bishops, presbyters and deacons, the person in charge of these major cities, these five centers, they came to be known as Patriarch, which simply means father, Pidak and Mark. So four major offices, Patriarch, the head of these five cities, five Patriarchs were there. Then under them, bishops in all the main churches, then under their control, there were presbyters and deacons. So this became the administrative structure of the church from the beginning of the second century. Now during the course of time, there began divisions or differences, okay, more than that, differences of opinions. 
not theological but non theological keep in mind for 95% of the reasons behind the division among christians are non theological but purely non theological now there were several differences of opinions between these patriarchs there were geographical difference political difference linguistic difference then cultural difference i'll explain see roman empire was divided into two isodoli eastern roman empire and the western roman empire now out of these five major centers four of them were in the eastern roman empire and only one rome was in the western roman empire alexandria antioch jerusalem and constantinople all these four centers were in the eastern province and rome alone was in the western roman empire there was a cultural difference in all the eastern roman empire greek culture was dominating which was highly advanced in those days whereas in the western roman empire latin culture which was a semitic culture not much developed that was existing in the western roman empire so that was another major difference then there was a linguistic difference in the eastern roman empire all these four patriarchs they used greek as their official language worship service was conducted in the greek language whereas in the western roman empire latin became the official language and everything related to the church or the ecclesiastical language was latin that also became another difference the culture of course greek culture was highly advanced latin it was not so then several differences in practices also i show you one or two examples in the eastern roman empire where greek culture was uh, existing all the leaders of the church whether patriarch or bishop or presbyter all of them were uh, bearded they were grow- keeping their mustache and beard but in the western uh, latin culture clean shaven that became the practice then wearing of the black cassock that also was introduced during the time that was common in the eastern province but not in the west one thing i just wanted to add you may have a uh, doubt why do the priests wear a black cassock during the worship service in the mainline churches particularly in the orthodox churches that was a practice they borrowed from plato's academy plato the great greek philosopher started an academy few centuries before the birth of christ in athens where he began to teach the people philosophy because in those days that was the only subject through which they were able to learn uh, or answer all the questions that usually people ask where is there a god what is the future of this world then what is the future of man so all these questions were answered only by philosophy during those days and plato started an academy and the first requirement to be admitted in that plato's uh, academy was the candidate who comes to join there he should change his dress and begin to wear a black long robe the sign the symbol of total renunciation of the world worldliness and entry into a specific purpose pursuit of knowledge so it was mandatory that all the students of plato's academy should necessarily wear a black cassock there is no theological uh, meaning behind it but purely that was the system that shows that they are a group of people who said goodbye to the world and worldliness and worldly pleasures okay so several differences are there but in spite of these differences the church began to continue as one the four terms that characterize the church in those days was one holy catholic and apostolic church last week pastor also said catholic here doesn't mean that roman catholicism catholic simply means universal the church is universal but church was considered as one holy 
universal and apostolic so in spite of all these differences of opinion whether it was political or theological or non theological or cultural whatever it is the church maintained its essential unity all through the century but there were clashes between the leaders there were claims made by the people okay i am great i am the greatest you come under me so these are all there but still the essential characteristics of the church was made or we can say there was no denominations in those days the church was considered as one holy catholic and apostolic church but during the course of time the church in the western roman empire having its headquarters in rome they began to make certain extra ordinary claims there were several reasons for them number one the church in rome was the capital of the roman empire so church in the capital city it was a privilege almost all the members in the church may be uh, with good educational standard having high offices in the government very rich in influence men of influence so because of that the church in rome they began to make a claim that we are superior than all the other churches or patriarchs the head of the church in rome also began to make claim they began to say the church in rome was established by peter so they wanted to attach the church with peter as the one who founded it but we have no scriptural evidence that the church in rome was started by peter peter never visited rome during the early period but of course he martyred in rome itself but we have no scriptural evidence that the church in rome was established by peter but they began to make a claim that peter was their first pope so instead of the term patriarch they began to adopt another term pope papa papa same meaning father so they began to make a claim that peter is the founder of the church in rome and he is the first pope of this church then down through the centuries several people who came to the pope office of the church in rome particularly people like gregory the great innocent third leo the great so so many leaders of the church in rome they began to introduce several teachings so as to boost their uh, prestige their status and they wanted to show that they are the most important people so they began to make such claims such as they are the uh, visible head of the church then they also began to claim that what they say is equal to god's word inspired no one can question it it's authoritative then they also began to claim they have the keys of the heaven and the earth without their permission no one can enter into the kingdom of god or to heaven so thereby they also began to claim they have the authority to forgive the sins of the people so by introducing such teachings they wanted to add to their position and they wanted to say that we are equal to god god on the earth visible head of the church not the bible but what we say is authoritative that is inspired and you have to follow it and we also have the right the authority to forgive your sins so more than that to maintain this teaching they did not allow any of the christians in the western world to have a copy of the bible and read the bible reading of the bible was considered as an offense in the western christianity in the church having the center in rome even if there were a few bible they were kept chained in the altar of the church so that no one should open and take it away so 
people who are kept completely under ignorance they do not know what the bible teaches they follow blindly what the leaders particularly the pope and his uh, assistants say about the faith and the church that became the reason for the roman catholic church or the western church for their spiritual decline then coming to the eastern province where there were four patriarchs the church began to spread throughout africa asia minor and arabian peninsula arabia was a strong center of christianity during the first 3 4 centuries edessa was the first a uh, city where christianity was accepted as a state religion even before constantine uh, recognized christianity as a legal religion arbil edessa these were some of the strongholds of christianity in the arabian peninsula but the church christians were not taught properly there also and i would say that was the only reason why islam became a major force and it became a main threat to christianity in the arab countries christianity was totally distorted by the christians there was no proper qualified leadership in persia even muhammad though he was from a very poor family later he married to khadija who was a christian woman owning a big business and most of the teachings that we read from quran have some relations with christian teachings also see in persian peninsula as a result of the origin of islam islam officially uh, was started in 622 that was the year in which uh, muhammad fled from mecca to medina where muhammad was accepted by the people in medina and islam began to develop under the four caliphs they have a policy of jihad and all those things and within over 30 years of the time islam began to spread far and wide and almost all the major centers of christianity was conquered by the muslims including jerusalem the headquarters the birth place of jesus centers of two religions judaism and christianity that jerusalem city also was captured by muslims alexandria was captured by them and it was captured by them later in 1453 Constantinople also was conquered by the Muslims. So almost all the centers in the Eastern Roman Empire were Christians who followed the Eastern tradition. All their centers fell before the Muslims. So Christian strength that began to decline. Hundreds and thousands of Christians were forcibly converted to Christian. So Islam, Islam. began to spread far and wide only one place in the roman empire that the muslims were not able to conquer was the city of rome because mainly because of the power and the authority exercised by the pope himself all the other major centers came under the islamic control the churches in the eastern province came to be known as the orthodox churches or the eastern churches paurasthya sabhagal allege orthodox sabhagal orthos and doxa which means the true faith the christians who follow the true faith that is meant by orthodox and the western christians they came to be known as the roman catholic church catholicism and orthodoxy western christianity and eastern christianity but in spite of these two different names differences in practice and traditions liturgy was different but the church maintained its essential unity all through the centuries
centuries till the 11th century exactly in 1054 these two groups the eastern and the western orthodox or known as the catholic they were totally or officially divided into two denominations so we can say the first official division in the church denominationalism came to the church only in the 11th century from first till 1054 in spite of all those differences they maintained unity and oneness at least by name sake now back to the churches the spiritual life i already said by the beginning of the second century onwards all the leaders of the church they were not capable they were not spiritual but for name sake or for several other reasons particularly when we read the history of the roman catholic church most of the popes during that particular period were people who were the notorious robbers and thieves the officers were bought with money panam koduthana sabhayude ee adhigara sthanangal ella office gal ella aa kalagal vaangichirunnathu anganeyana oru pudhiya vaak a new word was coined in the english by the uh, by uh, simony s i m o n y simony because in acts chapter 8 we find simon he wanted to buy the gifts of the holy spirit by paying the money so from that practice the term simony came into existence so most of the officers officers were bought with money during those middle ages from lack of qualified qualitative leadership all through the church whether it is in the eastern province or in the western province bible as we have in this form was not available in those days people were not able to read and write they were not be literate illiteracy so they had to totally depend on whatever the leaders say and the leaders also stood for their vested interest maintaining their office their authority to make money and most of the leaders during the time led a luxurious life also they began to collect money from people under different labels pray for the dead so on and so forth for forgiveness of sin and with that money they began to spend luxurious lavish spending of money and some of the leaders were highly immoral also in those days in the western church celibacy was the principle that means all the lead leaders or officers were not permitted to marry they should maintain celibacy but there were even popes who made claims in public though i am not married i have six children so that was the uh, immorality rampant among most of the leaders of the church during those days there is a phrase in malayalam yatha raja thada praja as the leaders the people also said so church is compared to a flock the flock is totally dependent on the shepherd if the shepherd is not concerned about the flock we can imagine what would be the outcome so this was the situation of the church from second century till or 14th 15th century that's why we generally call that period as the dark ages irunda kaliyava absolutely darkness everywhere name saying they were christians once in a while they go to the church and the leaders they recite the liturgy the people they listen it and they come back no reading of god's word 
and bible was not available for the ordinary people even if it was available people were not able to read and understand even if they were able to read they were not permitted to read the bible and understand the truth you can imagine what else we can expect during this period is that the purpose for which jesus christ came to this world suffered the lord died on the cross he asked his followers go into all the world preach the gospel what was that happened nothing during those centuries there was a small group of christians who decided to leave all the worldliness to say goodbye to everything sell the possessions leave everything then to follow jesus christ a large number of people began to come in that line and this began a movement within the church during that time known by the name monasticism monk m o n k hermit sanyasi so leaving everything and so the verses also are there in the new testament in matthew chapter 19 we read a rich young man came to jesus one day asking him what he should do to inherit eternal life then jesus said okay you follow the commandments then the young man said i observe all the commandments what is still i lack then jesus told them if you want to be perfect you go sell everything give it to the poor then you come and follow me now taking this particular teaching of christ literally many of the people decided to follow that that was the reason why a movement began in the church which we call it as monasticism sanyasa samuhangal sanyasa jeevitham now they are the only group of christians at least maintained minimum of the spiritual standard during those centuries they devoted themselves in reading the bible making the copies of the bible writing books then uh, uh, involving in agricultural work because in those days usually the common people do not do any manual labor they do not work with their hands but these monks were the people who taught the world the lesson the dignity of labor any labor has its own dignity they began to do manual work they began to cultivate the land they began to have their yield and they also began to support the society people those who were not having food to eat they began to provide them so they became concerned about the society also so that's the reason why we have numerous groups known as franciscans dominicans jesuits capuchins numerous father groups societies in the church highly learned educated men dedicated their life for the service of god they total denial of world and they do everything possible for the welfare of the people so this group became the only group and some of them they began to travel around what we read is that they used to travel with a stick in their hand and when with one pair of dress oru jodi vastram thayil oru vadi with this they began to travel from place to place sharing the gospel the way that they knew angle yada they even began to travel to different places two of them came to russia where they began to preach the gospel the king of russia was converted and that's why 
Russia became a Christian country. Not now, but before the October Revolution, before the origin of communism. So they began to travel and many of the monastic groups came to India also. Franciscan fathers, Dominican fathers, Capuchin fathers, Jesuit fathers, they all came to India. They began to involve in different areas of ministry. They began to involve in social work. So many. So they began to travel all over the world. So they are the only group of people at least who had a little sense of spirituality and were involved in evangelism during those dark ages. So years and centuries were passing without any change, but for namesake, there were a number of Christians. Majority of Christians were forcibly converted to Islam. In the Western Roman Empire, the people were totally under ignorance. In East also, there was not much difference. Almost everything was the same. In this context, God's purpose will not be and cannot be fulfilled. See, God's plan was the salvation of the whole world. If there is no one to go and preach, if they do not follow the precepts of Christianity, see, God again began to intervene into history. When the church began to go down, decline in its spiritual level, God began to raise some people from different corners. Or I would say, God began to deal with some people in different parts of the world. And the first effort in that line was building up the system of modern education. From 12th, 13th, 14th centuries, more than 50 universities were established in different parts of Europe. Europe became the center of excellence learning in those days. The famous universities like Paris, Halle in Germany, then Oxford and Cambridge, all these universities were initially started by these monks or monastic orders. The founder of the Society of Jesus, Ignatius Loyola, a great man, Francis Xavier, they were all students of Paris University, then they became the teachers there, and they started the Society of Jesus, who the members began to travel around the world, preaching the gospel and propagating Roman Catholic faith. So God began to deal with such people to make education common. Schools, colleges, universities were established in different parts of the world. People who went to these universities had their higher education. Most of them while studying in those universities, from the library they got a copy of the Bible, either in Latin or in Greek. They got a copy of the Bible, which they began to read. It. As they began to read, their eyes began to open. They recognized the worth, the value of God's word. And they gave priority to translate Bible into the vernacular languages. The credit of translating Bible goes to John Wycliffe, a teacher from Oxford University. Then John Huss, another teacher from Bohemia, Prague University. Then William Tyndale, William Coverdale, many started translating God's word. Since people were educated, they were able to read the Bible. They began to understand the Bible. They began to check 
what they teach in the church and what is written in the bible and they began to recognize what is taught in the bible is not according to god's word so several people began to join together in reading of the bible trying to understand the bible spending time in prayer so several groups began to come into existence in europe during the 12 13 14 centuries when education began to spread several other developments changes also began to take place in the society the politics began to change culture began to change society began to change we know in those days europe was facing an evil system political system known by the name feudalism all the land was occupied by some rich landlords and majority of the people were peasants laborers working for them all the privileges were enjoyed by a small group when education began to spread feudalism slowly began to decline and finally it collapsed instead new city states one by one like germany france italy switzerland so new city states slowly began to come into existence so feudalism that system was completely collapsed so there were only two groups earlier the upper class and the lower class now there came into existence a middle class so upper class middle class and the lower class so systems began to change once people were educated they began to involve or they began to get jobs that brought them handsome salary which changed their culture lifestyle their status so total changes began to take place in the society the science began to develop numerous inventions discoveries geographical explorations magellan vasco da gama then the one who came to uh, america uh, columbus see people began to travel from spain and portugal to different parts of the world thus they came to us and canada everywhere they came and they began to occupy those territories so geographical explorations became very common scientific inventions last week uh you remember about you about the printing press john gutenberg he invented the movable printing press which began to undergo several development as that we have in our present form then several theories like the law of gravity i usually say before i say newton also all the apples were falling down some of them would have even died but none of them was able to find out why this is coming down but i said newton was able to come out with a new law there is a law eh, the earth attracts everything towards it the law of gravity similarly numerous inventions steam engine radio so forth many so all these changes together the rational development medieval philosophy people like thomas aquinas anselm many others so they all began to come out with their reflections the whole europe began to undergo a total change and all these changes together we call it as renaissance navothanam the whole society began to change and i would say god prepared europe for a change for god's plan to be fulfilled See, God said, Jesus said, last week also I said, I will build my church. He is responsible. 
So he began to change Europe. He began to bring many people together. In the University of Halle in Germany, a small group of students, because in those days in all the universities, all the subjects were taught. All the education was under one roof, whether it is uh, arts or science or theology or medicine, everything was under one roof. So Halle also was a secular university. Many young men from different parts of Germany came there. There were some teachers, Hermann Franke, Jacob Spinner, they got the privilege to read the Bible. They were convinced of the value of the Bible. So they began to gather some of the students of the Halle University during their interval under the shade of a tree or in the corridor for spending time in reading the Bible and meditating on that. And they also began to pray. Then they also spent time to hear what the Lord has to tell them. From that development, there started a movement later, I'll come to that later to explain, Pietism, Bhakti Prasthanam. And that became the main reason for the beginning of the modern missionary movement. All the missionaries during the last two, three centuries went all over the world, preaching the gospel, converting millions of people, and the church began to grow. Everything was mainly because of these spiritual movements like pietism, evangelical awakening, etc., etc., etc. So Europe, and from Europe, it began to spread to the other parts of the world. Every walk of life began to change. And everything was pointing towards one element, the need of reading God's word, making it available to the people, translations one after the other. Then, printing press played a key role in making God's word available to the ordinary people in their own language. Even before the birth of Martin Luther, these systems or preparations were arranged. So I would say God's hand behind the collapse of feudalism, the development of modern science and technology, widespread uh, development of education, behind everything God's hand definitely we can find. As a result of all these developments, that period that we call as the Dark Ages slowly began to change. Darkness slowly began to move out. God's word began to take, make influence among the people. Changes began to take place. But on the other side, the Roman Catholic Church, they continued in their teachings. This did not affect them. They introduced several new unscriptural te teachings. Image worship, idol worship, then praying to the saints. Several uh, unscriptural practices were introduced by several popes from time to time. And during this time, they introduced another new teaching which became an immediate reason for the Reformation during the time of Martin Luther. And that teaching is known as the sale of indulgences. The whole idea is this. Roman Catholic Church or the Popes, they have the right, the authority to forgive the sins of the people. Or in other words, they have the right to stamp visa for the members of the Catholic Church to go to heaven. How this is possible? They said, you come with your money. Give the money to us. Then we will forgive your sins. So they began to issue a receipt, receiving the money, that so and so has given so much of money and his sins are forgiven. This is called the indulgences, Pabamodhana Chitinda Vilpana. 
this was introduced mainly to rebuild the St. Peter's Basilica, the main headquarters, the church in Rome where the Pope lives. So a huge sum of money was necessary for uh, building this church. Usually for building the church, people will not donate. So they wanted to collect money from the people. So the Pope sent several agents to different parts of Europe to sell the central genesis and make maximum money. 50% of the money can be taken by the agents and the 50% should go to the building of the church, a profitable business. Now a person by name Tetzel, he was a monk. He came to Germany from Rome to sell indulgences in Germany also. That was in 1517 AD. That was the day in which Martin Luther, we'll come back to Martin Luther, his life and how he was equipped to be the reformer. So that was the day Martin Luther came out in public against this new introduced the teaching, the sale of indulgences, and he wrote 95 points against the unscriptural teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, and he nailed these 95 points on the main door of the church in Wittenberg city in Germany where Luther was living. This became a public open protest against the Roman Catholic Church and its unscriptural teachings. This nailing of the 95 Thesis, it is known as the 95 Thesis, the 95 points, that was nailed on the church on October 31, 1517. And that day is regarded as the day of the outbreak of Reformation. Navigarnathinde Tudakam E October 31, 1517. With that even the public protest, he nailed the 95 theses against the Roman Catholic Church so that every people can come and read it. This began a third another phase in the history of the church, a going back to the apostolic faith and practice. God began to use Martin Luther, the Reformation broke out, and things began to change rapidly since then. Okay. Remaining things I will explain in the next class and I will wind it up.